everybody, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. I hope you're all doing fantastic as always. So, today on the podcast I am going to be talking about turbulence. Turbulence is one of these things that I get a lot of questions about, maybe not here on the channel, but a lot when I am out working and I meet people who are afraid of flying. So, what I want to do with this podcast is explain a little bit about what turbulence is, uh, if you should be afraid of it, and uh, what we in the cockpit are doing to avoid turbulence and just give you a little bit of an overview of it okay so stay tuned it's going to be a quite interesting one and uh, if you know anyone who are afraid of flying or something you might want to share this video with them because i think it's going to be reassuring okay so um the best way to think about turbulence is uh, the air is like a fluid okay it's like water and a fluid who is being disturbed will cause little vortexes. So, for example, if you're looking at water flowing down a, a, uh, a river and it flows past the stone, you can clearly see how the water moves around the stone and it creates little vortexes and stuff around it. And air does exactly the same. And of course, an aircraft flies within the air. So it will be subjected to these little vortexes. Um, generally, when you feel turbulence uh, just after takeoff at lower level, it, this is what you feel. You feel the air who has been moving over mountains, buildings, terminal buildings, things like that. And when it, it's encountering these obstacles, it's forming these little tur uh, vortexes, uh, which is going to be felt like this little shudder of turbulence that you can get just after takeoff. It can actually extend for a couple of thousand feet, um, especially if you are taking off close to a mountain range and it's really strong winds, for example. And uh, it feels really quite unpleasant, but the fact is that it's not very dangerous, okay? It's an everyday occurrence for us and it's... Um, turbulence will not, and I'm, I'm going to state this very clearly now in the beginning of the podcast, Turbulence is not dangerous to an aircraft in the way that you think that it's dangerous, okay? Turbulence is not dangerous to the aircraft structure as such. Um, it's not going to uh, flip the aircraft over and throw it into the ground. It's not going to bend the wings or anything like that. Turbulence can be a little bit dangerous um, because things inside of the aircraft, which are generally the passengers and the, and the hand luggage and the trolleys and the cabin crew, can, if they encounter turbulence suddenly, of course, be thrown around a bit. So when you guys hear about um, passengers being injured because of turbulence, you, the, the newspapers love to blow this up in, uh, into their headlines saying that 15 people uh, were injured during a flight because of turbulence. This is generally what's happened. The, the, uh, the aircraft has moved into an area of turbulence which was not forecasted, uh, which meant that people were moving about and when they hit the turbulence they might have fallen over or they might have gotten warm coffees uh, scalding their hands or trolleys might have fallen on someone if it's really really bad someone might have actually been thrown up and hit their heads on the ceiling uh, so this happens um, quite commonly I would say it's probably one of the most common ways that people are being injured um, when it comes to the airline industry but this is what this is the way that turbulence generally, generally are dangerous, okay? It has nothing to do with the structural integrity of the aircraft. It has to do with people falling over, just like they would on a boat or a train or a car if they were walking around in a bus, for example. This is also why we, the pilots, we always switch on the seatbelt sign when there is any uh, indication of turbulence coming up. That is because we want you guys to come back and sit down and put your seatbelts on so that you won't be thrown around in case we would hit turbulence. Um, we also tend to tell our cabin crew both in the briefing before in the morning that today on this route we might encounter turbulence so be vigilant against it and if we feel that we are getting reports that we're about to enter a turbulent area we might even tell the cabin crew to stop their service and return to their seats because we don't want them to injure themselves and we don't want them to pour hot, hot coffee over someone or something like that. So when you hear that cabin crew return to your stations, for example, due to turbulence, it's because of that. We, we want everyone to be strapped in. And this is also why we always tell people to keep their seat belts on when you're in your seat. Because you never really know when you hit one of these little pockets of, of turbulence. Uh, it's always the safest way to sit down with your seat belt fastened. Okay? 
So, uh, so low level turbulence is generally uh, caused by that, by the air moving over buildings or mountains and things like that. As you climb, you are likely to be able to, to encounter two other types of turbulence. So the turbulence that, um, that I'm explaining first is the one associated with thunderstorms. So I'm sure you've all seen on these like summer days, late summer days, these thunderstorms that tends to form and when the clouds are big enough they will have a top that looks a little bit like cotton, and they're really dark and they can sometimes produce lightning and thunder. Um, within these clouds, the move is move, uh, sorry, the, the air is moving really, really quickly, both up and down. Okay, and that type of uh, of air movement causes very severe turbulence. But the good thing is that the these type of clouds also contain a lot of water and moisture in different forms, which means that our weather radars that we have uh, can detect them very easily. When, uh, when something has a lot of water in it, a lot of movement, the weather radar can very clearly detect where these storm clouds are and we have uh, very clear stipulated distances to avoid these clouds by. Okay, so we don't fly through them and we don't even fly near them. You might think that it looks like we fly near them but it, that's because they're really big normally and we, we stay uh, several nautical miles away from an active thunderstorms. So that's um, turbulence that's associated with convective activity with thunderstorms. We just clearly do not fly through it. And if that tends, if it tends to be one of those thunderstorms sitting on top of an airport, we don't land. We go to another airport and we land there instead. Um, the other type of turbulence that you might, enc uh, might encounter is something called clear air turbulence. Now, clear air turbulence is something different. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of something called a jet stream. A jet stream is basically um, a very quick kind of torrent of air that moves around in the upper part of the atmosphere and it moves at very very high speeds and it's generally fairly small in its geographical size okay so it's only extending for a couple of nautical miles and it moves at speeds of around 100 to 150 knots so up around 300 kilometers per hour sometimes now the air that's surrounding these jet streams are generally slower moving air. And whenever you have uh, something moving really quickly next to something moving really slowly, those things will kind of rub up against each other. And when they do, they cause um, some of these vortexes at higher level as well. So I'll show you a picture uh, of a significant weather chart. This is um, a type of chart that we use when we do our pre-flights and we look for these types of areas. And if you can see that there is a, a black arrow going up and it's turning over Iceland and it's moving down through Denmark. And next to that it's kind of a dotted line on each side. Now what that is, is an area of predicted clear air turbulence and what the black line is, is a jet stream. So, those type of, of turbulence can be predicted, so it can be on the planning stage predicted, but we can't see it. The weather radar will never pick it up because it doesn't have moisture inside of it. Um, what we can do, however, and which what we frequently do, is when we do hit that type of turbulence, because we know that it's very annoying for the passengers, it's not very comfortable, we ask other aircraft around us, or we have ask air traffic control, if the turbulence is lesser at any other altitude. Because this type of turbulence tends to be associated with only a very limited um, vertical area. So if we hit a lot of, well, you know, a moderate amount of turbulence at 38,000 feet, then we ask air traffic control if they have it, had any reports at 36,000 feet. And if they haven't, we simply just descend the aircraft down and hopefully it's better there. And we don't do that because we're afraid of the safety of the aircraft. We do that because of the... Uh, experience for the passengers really. It's supposed to be um, a pleasant experience to fly and we know that people don't like turbulence. And we also want to drink our coffee obviously when, when it's turbulent it's hard to drink the coffee so we want to avoid it as well. Now to some uh, common questions that I get quite often. Um, so people always ask me, so I've been sitting inside of an aircraft and I've been looking out on the wing and I've seen how the wing is flexing up and down. Is it supposed to do that? 
Uh, the answer to that is yes. Um, the aircraft are constructed to have a wing structure that is flexible. So when we move into a little bit of turbulence, you will indeed see how the wings are kind of moving a little bit. Uh, that's because a flexible structure is stronger than a rigid structure. So if you see the wings are moving up and down, it's actually a good thing. Okay, It's supposed to do that. Uh, the body as well is a little bit uh, flexible. Okay, now. When I'm talking about that, it, it's also a good idea to explain, because people are asking me, is there, are there any places inside of the aircraft which are more or less subjected to turbulence? And there actually are. Um, if you want to be as little as possible subjected to turbulence, the best uh, places to sit inside of an aircraft is as close as possible to the center of gravity, which is over the wings. Okay. If you sit over the wings, you will have, we will experience less turbulence. The, uh, the places that will experience more turbulence tends to be the ones toward the back of the aircraft. And that is because the aircraft is a little bit flexible. So if you have a bit of turbulence in the middle, the back is going to move a little bit more. Okay? So there will be more turbulence in a certain part of the aircraft, but the difference is very small. Okay? It's very small. Um, other questions that I get quite often is, will it have an effect on the engines, for example? And the answer to that is no, no. It will not have an effect on the engines. The engines uh, can be affected by a change in airflow into them, but they are constructed to withstand uh, birds flying into them, things like that. So a little bit of turbulence will not affect the engines. So uh, to summarize, the, the engines will not be affected, the airframe will not be affected, and uh, so you don't have to, be, have to worry about that in any kind of turbulence that you would have encountered. What the pallets do up in the front? Well, I talked a little bit about it. We more make sure that we have a weather radar on to see that we avoid thunderstorm, for example. We talk to air traffic control so that we can find areas. If we're in an area with a, with a lot of turbulence, we try to find altitudes which are have less turbulence um, to give our passengers as smooth of a ride and as a comfortable ride as possible. Um, we also um, actually reduce the speed slightly. We have something called a turbulence penetration speed, but that speed is very very close to our normal cruising speed, so you as a passenger will never notice that we're reducing the speed in turbulent areas. The same goes for climb and descend. And apart from that we just try to get ourselves out of the turbulence as soon as possible so that you guys have a, a pleasant experience in the back and also so that we can continue drinking our coffee, because we really like our coffee. That's it guys, I hope that answered some of your questions about turbulence, and I hope that reassured you a little bit. Um, keep sending in questions, send them in below, give me a like if you like it, and as always, feel free to share my videos with your friends, family, or on internet forums. For now, I hope you have a fantastic evening, and I'll see you.